there have been some fascinating experiments done about the power of conformity, the power of conformity. I remember reading about one experiment where they would have volunteers, test subjects come in. They didn't really know what was going on, but they, they came into a doctor's waiting room or a waiting room. And there were other people in the waiting room who were in on the experiment. And when they heard a beep, that they would stand up. And the people who were not aware of what was going on, they would look around and, and wonder why they were standing up. And they would constantly stand up and then sit down. And then the beep would happen again later. And then they would stand up and uh, then sit down. And what would happen, what the researchers found is that eventually many of these uh, volunteers who didn't know what was going on would then stand up along with the rest of the people, even though they had no idea why they were standing up. And it just seemed so awkward uh, that they would be the only ones sitting while everyone else was standing. So that was one experimental power of conformity. But not only just was there a pressure to want to be like the other group, this pressure even uh, convinced people, some people, to say things that they didn't believe. Well, there was another experiment where they brought in volunteers to look at some pictures, and they have different lines and different uh, lengths of lines. And they would ask people in the group, uh, which is the longest line, which is the shortest line. And uh, most of the subjects in were, were part of the group, uh, part of the experiment. So they were told beforehand, these are the answers you should give. And so all they gave all correct answers except for the last one. And they said, oh, this is the shortest one and this is the longest one or whatever it was. And they gave the incorrect answer on purpose. And the, the people who weren't aware of what was going on, they would follow along uh, with the right answers. And then at the end, you could see that they would have some uh, stress because they were wondering why, why are they saying the wrong answer? Even though I could see just like the other ones, this is not right. And, and so uh, they found out that people were actually willing to give the wrong answer in order to conform to what everyone else was saying. Uh, maybe justifying it, or oh, maybe I'm not seeing it correctly. They must be right. How could everyone else be wrong uh, and myself be right? Um, or it, it, they just had that pressure that I don't want to be different from the rest of the group. Whatever it was, uh, the researchers found that there were a, a significant group of people that would actually say the incorrect answer in order to conform to the group. And this is the power of conformity. And the Bible says in Romans 12, 2, that we should not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we've been talking about the importance of not going along with things that are uh, of the wrong spirit. Uh, there's a, a lot of movement and uh, uh, pressure these days to demonize people who think differently from us, um, who practice different things, who, who live different lifestyles, and to criticize them, to judge them. And so it creates this division where which side are you on? And uh, it requires <clears throat> courage to be able to uh, uh, not conform to what people are doing. And maybe there's pressure for people to believe certain things and to do certain things, even though we may have a conviction that it's wrong or that the Lord is speaking to us in a different way. And it requires that boldness, that bravery, that courage to be able to stand on conviction, to be able to speak out when uh, there might be pressure to conform. And it's been said that courage is perhaps the most important virtue. Why? Because without courage, it may be impossible to express any of the other virtues. Because uh, in many cases, in order to express love, in order to be truthful, in order to be kind, uh, it requires some sort of risk. And if we don't have that ability, that bravery, that courage, then many people will uh, <clears throat> not pursue ex expressing that, those other virtues. And this is biblical, the sevenfold spirit of God. Uh, God is the spirit of holiness, fear of the Lord, knowledge, understanding, counsel, wisdom. And the last one is might, might. 
Uh, and the, the idea being that we can know things, we can have knowledge, we can understand issues, we could have God's counsel on it, and we could have wisdom for what to do, how to properly apply that knowledge. But if we don't have might, if we don't have strength, if we don't have courage, then we cannot uh, actually pursue wisdom. Uh, so how many know you can know the right thing to do, but not have the ability to do it? And that requires courage. That requires bravery. And the Lord is desiring his people uh, not to conform and go along with the crowd, but to have courage and boldly speak out, stand up, uh, to preach the gospel and uh, to be a light in the midst of darkness. And that, that requires courage. And so in Acts, when the, the believers were getting persecuted, they would pray together and uh, the Holy Spirit would fall upon them and fill them and even shook the house where they were at. And the Bible says that they were able to preach the word of God even more boldly than before. And so this is a gift of the Holy Spirit to have this courage, to have this spirit of might, that we can actually pray for so that we don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world. So if God is calling you to speak out, if God is calling you to uh, <clears throat> address things that are not right in the eyes of the kingdom, but to do it with love and humility and honor, uh, <clears throat> it, it's going to require this boldness to come upon people. And uh, this is something that we can pray for individually as well as corporately. Um, and so uh, I believe that this is a season where we should ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of boldness, for the gift of courage, so that we don't conform. And what does the Bible continue to say in Romans 12, too, that when we no longer conform to the pattern of this world, but are transformed by the renewing of our mind, then what happens? It says, then we will able, be able to test and approve God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So many people who are just going along with the crowd and conforming to the pattern of this world, they think that they're in, many of people think that this is fine, this is normal. But when they're actually renewed in their thinking, in their mind, then they're actually able to see, whoa, well, no, this is not in alignment with God's truth. And so it requires people who are willing to take a stand against uh, conformity to God's standards, uh, you know, against God's standards, uh, to take a stand and say, no, 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 this is not right. And we need to be a light. We need to be a beacon of truth in order to preach his good news so that those who are living in darkness will see the light and will know the truth so that what will happen, the truth will set them free. And so uh, we are in this season where there's so much chaos and confusion, a lot of demonization, criticism, and uh, a lot of pressure from those in authority and power to silence uh, those who may have differing views. And uh, this is a wake-up call for the church to be able to rise up and have that courage and that wisdom to know when and how to speak up and stand up, and speak out and stand up, and have that courage to uh, preach the good news wherever they are. And so, bless you uh, to pray, to receive that infusion of the Holy Spirit uh, so that you can not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, uh, but have that courage to renew your mind, have that transformation of your mind so that we can truly be a light to this world and help those who are living in darkness.